Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba' Concerning the fourth condition of Tawbah and that has to do with when it involves the rights of others meaning that the sin that you have transgressed or you have committed the bounds you have transgressed and the sin that you have committed when it has to do with the rights of others and in that situation for example, if someone has stolen the wealth of someone else, then in order for their repentance to be accepted by their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala is that they should return the wealth to the individual uh, whose, wealth it, whose wealth was stolen and return the rights to the rightful owner. And another situation is, for example, if a person transgresses on the rights of another person, for example, through debt, of not paying their uh, debt to to a person, then they, of course, must fulfill, and before they can repent to their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, they must pay back the debt, the money that they owe to that individual, unless, of course, that person excuses them of the debt. So they need to return the right of that individual. Uh, another example would be the situation where a person has transgressed the bounds by harming another person. So, for example, if a person has struck someone on the face or on the head and it has caused them injury, then that other person has the right to uh, to 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 get their right back. So if you want forgiveness from that person, they have a right to get recompense for the injury by actually doing the same action to you if that person so desires. And this is in accordance with the the ayat where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, uh, "The recompense for a misdeed is a misdeed comparable to it," meaning that if a person has harmed someone, then that person can reciprocate the harm without going beyond the bounds, without transgressing the bounds. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَمَنْ اَعْتَدَ عَلَيْكُمْ فَاعْتَدُوا عَلَيْهِ بِمِثْلِ مَا اَعْتَدَ عَلَيْكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever transgresses the boundaries against you, transgress against them in a comparable manner. But of course, Islam uh, and, and, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encourages us to be gentle and kind and to be to excuse and pardon one another, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most pardoning, Tabarak wa ta'ala. He is the one, the off-forgiving, the most merciful, so that um, we should strive to pardon one another. Uh, but we also have the right, you do have the right, it's within your right to ask for your right, to ask for your haq back. So this shows us, in order to have a person uh, to, to receive forgiveness from your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala when it involves the right of someone else, that you must return that right. And if it involves harming them, then they have the right to the equal amount of uh, harm with you. But do not transgress the bounds. Do not transgress the bounds. And another example, uh, which, which is to, in, in order to illustrate, is that a person can also... Instead of getting the recipro uh, the penalty of recipro recipro reciprocity or reciprocating that harm, they can also ask instead for something else to compensate, another type of compensation from the individual. So, for example, if an individual verbally abuses another uh, another person and he dishonors him and so forth, the offending individual is obligated to present himself before the victim and then seek his pardon in a manner which is mutually acceptable. So that doesn't mean that the person also dishonors him, but in a way, instead, he can come and in, in a way in which it's mutually acceptable. And this is so irresp This is um, uh, in the situation if the individual, if they, for example, ask for some sort of compensation, maybe a financial compensation, then that person can be obligated to fulfill their request if they want to be pardoned by them and, of course, pardoned by their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those are just some of the 
issues with regards to the rights of others when it comes to making uh, toba. Another very important uh, aspect <clears throat> is regarding the scholar's position regarding the rights uh, connected to backbiting. So, for example, if an individual has, back, has spoken about another individual in his absence, slandering them, defaming them, or what have you, we know this is a major sin. And we know in order for them to have toba with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it requires them to, <clears throat> to uh, seek apology from that person, as well as feeling sorrow and leaving the backbiting and being determined not to return to it. However, some of the scholars differed over this issue. So a group of the scholars, they said, the person who defames the other person should, and this is the, the, the view that I was just articulating, is that they should present them to the, to themselves to the person and they should seek their forgiveness and, their, and for them to uh, pardon them. Another group of the scholars said, no, the defamer should not present himself before the defamed uh, because the circumstances are different. So if the individual is aware of the backbiting committed against him, then the wrongdoer should. So they bring details. So they basically are saying that if a person has transgressed the bounds with another person, they have defamed them by backbiting and slandering them, then that person, and, and that person is aware that the, the other person has backbitten them, that is has spoken behind, behind their back, then in that situation, since they're aware of the sin, then that person must go to that person, present himself to him, and say, please forgive me for backbiting and speaking ill about you. Okay? The other situation, which is, the other situation is when a person uh, is unaware that they're being backbitten. So this group of scholars that hold this view, they say that in this situation, since they're unaware, then it is not on them. They do not have to uh, seek the forgiveness of that person, but rather they can make their repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and, and so forth. So this is uh, uh, the details regarding this issue, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's best. Um, and it is very important for us to also be cautious of the rights of others and to be uh, uh, be aware and be pardoning. That if someone also, this is another point for us to reflect on, that if a person has transgressed against our rights, then in that situation, we should also be pardoning and, and having forgiveness without causing the people harm uh, and, and, and wishing to transgress against them. So we should be forgiving. We should have an open heart in order to help and assist one another. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and protect us from backbiting and, and taking the rights of others. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from being oppressors and being oppressed. Because the as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the dua of the oppressed is accepted. It's, 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 uh, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it took, uh, that you know for, uh, fear the supplication of the person who's oppressed why because the person who's oppressed their supplication is accepted so meaning that if they supplicate against the tyrant then perhaps then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept their 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 supplication and perhaps it can cause that tyrant to fall or be harmed so we do not want to be in the position of the oppressor. And may Allah protect us and forgive us for any oppression that we've done. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.